Hi, this is your instructor, Teresa Pelkey. Welcome to our class. Let's continue with our class. We will now look at animations. Animations are created in jQuery using the animate method. And what animations do, they perform some kind of a, an effect whereas something is happening over a period of time by manipulating a certain set of CSS properties. Now an event, excuse me, an animation does not need to be connected to an event, whereas an effect does. An animation can run when the page loads or just within any function call. The animate method is based on CSS styles, whereas the property value is gradually changed, creating an animated effect. You can only animate numeric values, so any CSS property that takes a numeric value can be animated. You cannot animate a string value, such as a color or a shorthand property. Animations are created using the JavaScript syntax for the CSS property, not using the CSS syntax. And we will look at that. For example, if you wanted to animate the font size, the name of the property is font capital S size, not font hyphen size, which is the CSS property name. Another example, margin top, margin capital T top, not margin hyphen top. So what we're doing, we're taking our hyphenated CSS properties, we're making them one expression, and we are camel casing them. All right, the syntax for the animate method. The animate method obviously is tied into a selector. Everything is tied into a selector. Here inside the opening and closing parentheses of the animate method, we see the styles to be manipulated. So the styles to be manipulated are a required parameter. We also have an optional speed, easing, and callback function. So not only do we animate these styles, we set the speed at which the animation occurs, the easing value, and a callback function uh, to be executed after the animation finishes should we wish to do so. So let's take a look at the syntax. Here I have the this selector dot animate. Notice where the animate opens and closes. If we were to animate the height property slowly, notice the property name is not in quotations. So we have property colon. Now, because we have the unit of measure px being used, therefore everything would be in quotations because there is a literal in there. All right. So if you're using the unit value, it needs to be in quotations. However, looking at the next example, if we are just using a number, there are no quotations for that number. So here we have the property to be manipulated and the speed factor at which that will happen. Here is an example of how you would use a callback function. So here we have the animate method. Notice where it begins and ends. There is the property to be manipulated, the speed factor, comma, the callback function. So essentially after this font size was grew to 1.5 EM over a duration of three seconds, we will now add the color, the class red, which essentially would change the color. So this is an example of a callback function. Here again, the delay method will delay the animation or the effect method. And of course, it would require a time dur duration. So here we have again chaining. Here's our h1 selector dot delay, and we're delaying it three seconds. 
then we're going to animate it. Now remember, this is not happening on a click. Wherever this statement occurs, it would automatically run. So here we have the chaining, dot delay, dot animate. Um, here I have an example, and we can string several animate methods together, and you might want to separate them by a delay. And here is an example using chaining writing down. Whenever you start chaining more than two methods, it gets hard to read across the page. So you can just use a carriage return and, and use a lot of white space to make it nice and legible. So here we have the delay method, dot animate, dot delay, dot animate. So what, essentially what we're doing, we're growing the font, and then we're shrinking the font back with three second delays over a period of three seconds. All right, one thing about animating CSS properties, it's a good idea to already have that CSS style set before you animate them so that you have a baseline to return to. So if I'm going to grow something, 1.5 EM, it's a good, and if I want to reverse it, you need to know where you started from in order to reverse it. So it's a good idea to make sure that you have those properties already in place. A must, if you're, if you're going to animate opacity, if you want to animate something from low to high, that low already has to be set in your CSS or else you can't animate that. When it comes to moving things, manipulating from the left or the right or the top or the bottom, which essentially is positioning, the CSS positioning property. Here again, you need to have some kind of a positioning already set or else it doesn't know where to move it from. And I would suggest just using a relative, setting the position property to relative. The stop method. The stop method is used to stop an animation for that selector. And it is commonly used when we use the hover event method. And what that does, it will clear essentially what is called the queue of any animations that may be read, that may be lined up, ready to be executed, just in case the user happened to have accidentally moved their mouse over something ten times real fast. All right, so this is an example. Here we have the hover event method, which takes two fu functions the first function when the mouse goes over and the second function when the mouse goes out. So before we start the animation we have the stop method and it takes one parameter true which means that if there are any other animations meaning that same animation going on before we do it we're going to stop them so that it's a nice clean animation of the hover and we do the same thing with the um, second function which is essentially the mouse out. The set interval method. The set interval method is commonly used in creating an animation effect that's going to repeat over and over again. The set interval method is actually a method of the window object. And what it does, it runs a, a function at a specified time interval. And here again, we always use milliseconds. We have the syntax for using the set interval method two different ways here. The first, in the first line of code, we are calling a named function. So if we have a named function somewhere in our code and we use set interval, that means that we are calling that function every five seconds. We also can use an anonymous function. So here in the second block of code, we have the anonymous function, comma, 5000, which means that that code inside that anonymous function will be called every five seconds. So let's take a look at an example. Here I have a function called get small. And I have h1 selector dot animate. I'm animating the font size. And the duration of that animation is one second. All right. So the get small function in lo is going to actually make my font size 22 points. 
Now let's look at set interval. Set interval is calling an anonymous function. The anonymous function and inside those curly braces the code to be executed is an animation. Here, well, here I have the same h1 selector dot animate and in this case I am increasing the font size to 32 points and I'm actually doing that a little slower at 1500 at a second and a half. Alright so remember animations are just called so it's inside the function and we have the CSS to be manipulated, we have a time factor, and we have one other parameter. This is the callback function. This is the function that will be called after the animation stops. So after the animation grows, the font size grows to 32 points over a 1.5 second duration of time, we are going to call the function get small. Get small is going to animate that h1 down to the font size of 22 points in one second. Then we have the set interval, which means that that anonymous function is going to be called every three seconds. So that anonymous function is being called. The anonymous function is doing two things. It's growing the font size, and then the callback function is actually decreasing the font size. And that process is happening every three seconds. So what we would have if we loaded the page, we would have this line of code, line of text, growing and shrinking, growing and shrinking for as long as the page is loaded in the browser. So this is an example of how to create this repeating animation effect. So let's take a look at this animation. When the page loads, the heading is animated. The text becomes larger and the top margin will change over a period of time. And then it will stop. If we look at the source code, here's our selector h1.animate. There's my opening paren and my closing. Here is my CSS, my first property using JavaScript syntax, my second property, and my speed duration of 3000. And it is programmed to happen when the page loads inside the ready function. All right, in this example, and these are all in the, in the sample code, I will click on the heading to see the animation. So when I click on the heading, the text will become larger, and it's going to move from the left and go back. All right, let's take a look at this code. Here is my H1 selector and I'm clicking on it and I'm using the this keyword and here's my animate. I am manipulating the font size to 650 percent therefore I need the parentheses or excuse me quotations and from the left plus equals 275 and what that plus equals is all about it means it's and I'm manipulating it from the left plus equals 75. And what that plus equal is all about, because we have a position relative set, it means I'm going to move it 275 pixels relative to where it already is. And since I really don't know where it is, the browser knows it, which is why I have to give it a position of relative, meaning it's relative to where it is, so the browser can figure that out. And that is happening at a time duration of 2000. So here is my first parameter for the animate method, and here is my second parameter. My third parameter is a callback function. It just is a plain, simple, anonymous function. And what are we doing in the callback function? This dot animate. There's the animate method, and 
I'm setting the font size back to 175%, and I'm moving it back from the left, mine is equal to 75. And I'm setting it back from the left, mine is equal to 75. And I'm doing that a little faster at one second. So this is an example of the callback function. So here's my animate method, my properties, my speed, and after the animation is complete, I do this, which allows us to click and have something happen and have it reverse itself. This is the set interval method, and it is programmed to happen when the page loads. And this text is going to get large and small until the browser crashes. <laughs> so let's take a look at the source code. Everything is happening inside the ready. This is my function, get small. So I'm going to be calling this function. And this is where my size will decrease. There's my h1.animate. I'm animating this property at a speed duration of 1,000 milliseconds, which is one second. So here's set interval. Notice I don't have to say window.setInterval because it is a method of the window object just like the alert method is. And the set interval method calls, takes two parameters. First is the function to be executed, and the second function is the, is the interval, the time interval at which that function will be executed which is three seconds, which means that this function, what's inside this function, the code to be executed, will be executed every three seconds. Now let's take a look at what we have. Here's the h1.animate, and there's the font size, and we're animating it over this period of time, and then we have the callback function. So here's the callback function. The callback function is actually making the font size smaller. So the animate method is making the font size bigger, the callback function makes it smaller, and this happens every three seconds, and this is what we get. So not that this is something that you would want on your page, but this is the concept of being able to put something essentially in a loop. All right. The last thing I wanted to show you, and th these examples are in the sample code, here I'm hovering, and it got bigger, and I hover off. And notice the whole thing is changing. So this is an example of using the hover event method, and on the first function, I'm animating it large, and on the second function, I'm animating it back. Now supposing I hover over this thing real, real fast. Watch what happens. Notice, I stopped and it keeps on going. Do it again. Oops. Notice where my cursor is and it keeps on moving. This is where the stop method comes in handy. This is where we have to this dot stop before we actually call the animation so that it will prevent that jitteriness from happening. So if we quickly take a look, now it's only going to do it once. No matter what I do to it, it's only going to do it once because it will not run that animation until it has cleared out everything else.